All right, well this weekend I primed the vertical stabilizer skeleton and the inside of the skin, and I thought I would let this guy here tell you all about it. Doing some priming, uh, got the mask, the goggles, the suit, uh, I thought I would talk about how it went. So yeah, let's get started. All right, just kidding. Uh, so, as I was saying, uh, worked on the RV-10 today. Uh, I won't have any time lapse this time because uh, basically I spent the day priming the vertical stabilizer. So, couldn't really do time lapse uh, of that in the in the paint booth. Um, so I thought I would just you know talk about how it went. Uh, now that I'm done, and I'm uh, gonna have another video that I'm gonna put up where I, I talk about you know, what, why I decided to prime, um, at, you know, at least for now, and uh, what product I chose to use and, and why. And uh, so, yeah, that'll be in a, a different video. But so for this, for now, I just figured I'd talk about how it went. I uh, learned a couple of things about myself. I learned that I love wearing paper clothing. I think it's very comfortable. I think uh, everyone will be wearing it in the future. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, I learned that I don't know how to use a spray gun. Um, no big surprise there because I've never used one before, but it's a learning process. This is the inside of the plane. I doubt I would ever, um, you know, I'll, I'll improve. Uh, I learned some things already, uh, some mistakes I made, but, um, uh, you know, it's okay. I'm happy enough with the results. I'm sure I'll get better. I probably won't get good enough to be the guy that I would want painting the outside of my plane when it's finished, but, uh, you know, that's, that's a different story. For the inside, you know, the priming, uh, again, I'm, I'm satisfied with the results. I think I'll get better at it, uh, and it certainly is, you know, will do the job, which is, you know, corrosion protection. So, uh, yeah, so a couple things. First of all, the mask, this thing worked great. Uh, if we ever you know, as a society, find ourselves in a situation where we need to be wearing masks uh, to protect ourselves from some sort of airborne anything, this is what you're going to want, because I couldn't smell, you know, this was supposed to be smelly stuff, uh, and supposed to be super toxic, I couldn't smell a thing wearing this thing, this thing worked great, and I actually at one point kind of pulled, you know, pulled away and took a sniff just to see, is, you know, is it smelly? Yeah, you know, it smelled like paint, it wasn't some horrible horrible odor some people may not like it but point being without the mask yeah you can smell it with the mask nothing uh and i wore this thing when i was working with the acetone uh, too i don't know how big an acetone molecule is but it doesn't get through that so yeah the mask worked great the suit worked great see i even use my arm as a test sometimes uh the goggles i probably wore them part of the time. I probably had them up over my head some of the time because you know, they start to fog up, but eh, they work. The paint booth worked great. Um, at one point, I, you know, when I got out of there uh, and you know, I had come out and took the mask off and I couldn't smell anything out here. So obviously everything was flowing through and out the window. I can tell the fan was doing its thing because the blades of the scroll cage fan are kind of greenish now, so that was working. Uh, yeah, so from that standpoint, everything went pretty well. Um, my little stands, my PVC stands that I made, I had you know the parts hanging off of pieces of coat hanger. That worked okay. Um, I was a little bit afraid of this, and it, you know when I would spray the parts, they'd kind of swing. I had tried to hook each part with two hooks so that it wouldn't caught, you know, so it wouldn't pivot, but still they would sort of swing back. So, uh, you know, I got to where I would just put my hand behind it, and psh, this was another reason I got sprayed. Uh, so, uh, you know, that worked okay. Um, as far as the actual spray gun use, uh, I got a little frustrated because it seemed like it was not putting out a consistent spray. Sometimes I'd spray it and I'd get, a, you know, a good bit of liquid. Sometimes I'd spray and it seemed like all I was getting was air. I believe I know why now, and I believe it was operator error. Uh, so one thing, uh, something I've 
noticed about the spray gun, not while I was painting or priming, but afterwards when I was spraying um, thinner through it to clean it out, I realized that when you, when you squeeze the trigger, it's kind of a two-stage thing. You squeeze and you start getting air, and you continue to squeeze, and you can feel it hits a, you know, another point of resistance, and that's when it starts to you know, open the valve and let out the liquid. Well, for some reason, I didn't realize that. I don't know how I missed that. Um, I guess when I was setting the gun up, what I did was I, I put some thinner in the cup, and I was spraying on cardboard to get it set, you know, get the fan sort of the way I wanted it, and, and basically just to get, it, get the knobs dialed in. I was sure I was just hitting it full on, right? I wasn't worried about messing anything up, so I was just squeezing the trigger, and it was working fine. When I started spraying real primer on real plain parts, I guess I was kind of tentative. I mean, you know, sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Uh, and I guess what I was doing there is, you know, if I was trying to go real careful, carefully, I wasn't, wasn't squeezing all the way. Uh, so that's what I think was going on. Now there's also, there's a chance, so there's a little filter in here. And I had read that people complain that this filter will sometimes get clogged up. So maybe some of that was going on, but I think then it would have clogged up and it would have just quit working and, you know, wouldn't have started working again. It did, I, I do believe, uh, one of the jets, you know, for the, that create the, that shape the spray, one of those got clogged uh, because at one point when it was spraying and I was testing it on cardboard, I could tell that it was spraying sort of lopsided. So that was an issue, uh, but I could have dealt with that. So, uh, knowing what I know now, I think I could do a better job. Uh, what I've done is fine. I may go back and do, I don't want to say a second coat. I certainly don't think I need a second coat, but there, I've, I've noticed there are some spots, like right here, uh, this is a little lighter. You know, I didn't quite get as much. This, the way this was hanging, that was down at the bottom, and I, I just wasn't getting down there. I know, um, I noticed on the skin, way down at the bottom, uh, you know, I, I, I just, you know, the gun starts getting close to the floor with the air hose and everything, and, and you can't really get down there. So I, I may do something different there. I may flip it over and, you know, mix up maybe just a little bit more and do that. Uh, I haven't made up my mind yet. So in terms of how much I used, uh, just for reference, so I used one cup. Uh, I used this, you know, this measuring cup and ladled out, you know, dipped out one cup of, of the primer and put it in a mixing quart. And then I poured, you know, two cups worth of the catalyst into this thing and dumped it in. You don't wanna, you don't wanna do it the other way around. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter which order you do it, but the way I chose to do it was ladle, you know, to use this as a ladle to try and keep, you know, this clean. Uh, you know, you wouldn't wanna pour the catalyst in get this thing all wet with catalyst and then go dipping it into there because you get some catalyst in there. You don't want that. Uh, it took me about three hours of, you know, to actually do the priming. I spent probably about five hours today on this, this whole thing, but an hour or so I was getting set up and cleaning the parts. You know, I scuffed them with fine, the gray scotch bright. I put it away, but I scuffed them with the gray scotch bright just just lightly, not even really enough to get the, to pull the all clad, you know, the pure aluminum off. Uh, just enough to sort of rough stuff up uh, to give this something to adhere to uh, the primer and then cleaned them with acetone. And so that's how I prepared the parts. So that, that took me a little while and made some little coat hanger pieces and stuff. That took me a little while. And then from the start of when I mixed it, because once you mix the stuff, you've got eight hours to go. Uh, eight hours to use it, so I, you know, I checked the time, and from the start of that until I was basically done and, and climbed out of there uh, was about three hours, and so and it took me an hour to clean up. Now, the cleanup wasn't really that bad, uh, but yeah, so you know, three hours of spraying probably was a little much, but my lack of experience and the fact that I wasn't putting out as much spray. Uh, I basically just, you know, I wanted to spray till I had used up everything I had made because I didn't want to waste it. Uh, and three cups, you know, one, one cup of this stuff. So it's, that's eight ounces and I've got a gallon. 
So I think I should, that means I should be able to get, uh, you know, what, 15, 15 more uses if I keep doing it that amount. Um, it made three cups of liquid, obviously, one cup of this, two cups of that. And so three cups of material, which basically filled this thing pretty much to the top, almost too much. Uh, and then that was more than enough to do everything of you know, the whole vertical stabilizer. I don't think I'd want much less than that. Um, probably as my skills improve, I'll be more efficient in terms of doing it faster and in terms of probably wasting less, um, you know, with overspray maybe, or just fit, having to expend some to fiddle with the gun, get it, you know, because I had to keep messing with it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, that's that's how it went. It's kind of an interesting color. I, I really kind of like it. It's, it's neat. It looks really neat on the pieces that I did a decent job on. <laughs> uh, so this is the front spar. It actually looks reasonably smooth and consistent. The backside, maybe not as much, um, but not terrible. Uh, this, this piece here, you know, again, on this um, spar cap, I, I didn't cover, get as good a coverage there. There's a couple of places where it's splotchy, um, or it looks like I got too much, but you know, I was real conscious of not getting any drips, uh, you know, in a surface that was going to mate up to another surface. And in fact, that's probably why I was going too light on the trigger for one thing. Uh, and it also accounts for, and so that's, I, you can't even feel that. Um, but so that also accounts for kind of the, the biggest boo-boo that I made. And that's right here on the main spar. So what happened here is... I actually got a drip that would have been right here behind this uh, this doubler, this plate that goes here, uh, you know, double up to the top hinge goes. So uh, hinge bracket. So I didn't want that. I got that. The drip was there. I grabbed a paper towel and some thinner, wiped it off. Was able to clean the drip off, but the whole thing just sort of, you know, once you started cleaning, the spot kept getting bigger and bigger, and you know. So the, the more I cleaned, the bigger it got, and the bigger the mess got, until I finally, just, I didn't want it to have this big, funny-shaped, you know, area that was lighter. Uh, so I taped it off right here, got some Scotch-Brite with uh, thinner on it and paper towels, and just completely cleaned this, you know, took this part back to just bare aluminum, and then, you know, cleaned it and dried it and you know, used acetone on everything. Got it completely cleaned up. And then you know recoded it, and so that's you know, this is where the overspray was. It's darker, um, so you know at least uh, that'll be on the inside of the plane. I mean, all of this is on the inside of the plane, but uh, you know I'll never see that, and I'm okay with that. Uh, again, it's a learning experience. I'll get better at it. Um, really, I'm overall I'm happy with it because you know I didn't totally screw it up, and I I think I can get better. Uh, so anyway, that was uh, the work for today, for this weekend. Um, again, I may touch some things up, maybe may mix up a little bit more uh, some night during the week and go over stuff. It dries very fast, by the way. Uh, obviously, I've already got the pizza out, pieces out here and I'm handling. But uh, yeah, so I may do a little bit. I may not. I may just go with what I've got. It should be fine. And uh, Next steps are to start riveting everything together. So that should be pretty exciting. So, all right, time to get out of my special suit here.